Welcome back to Trib Preps. I'm Eric Lee alongside Todd Sommerfeld. Uh, we're here after week four of high school football in Wisconsin, week two in Minnesota to recap uh, this evening's action. It's <laughs> been a bit for us, a uh, crazy weather week, and then yes. we had some technical difficulties last week uh, with the video. We did but record we're, one, but it vanished. Yeah, it just, it just disappeared. Uh, but we're back, and if you're watching this, that means... It means we're back on. We're good. Uh, and we're glad to be back. Uh, we'll run through the scores and then dive into the games that we were at this week. Uh, I was at Central on Alaska tonight, and Central taking that one 36-33. Uh, really good offensive game for both teams. Uh, you were at West Salem Logan, and that's a win for the Panthers tonight. 21 to 7. Uh, Bangor over in Nasita and the Scenic Bluffs, 49 to 30. Uh, big games from Matthew Osterley and Tanner Jones. Cashton over on Alaska Luther, 35 uh, 18. In the NBC, Sparta, uh, 55 Toma, 7. Lots of points there. And Toma scored the first touchdown. Yes. Uh, 55 unanswered. Holman still looking for its first win of the season yeah. after falling to River Falls. 35-20. Closer game than the, the score. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, in the Cooley, Arcadia with a comeback win actually over over Westby, 22-14. Uh, GT gets its first win of the year over Viroqua, 54 to seven. At Dairyland, Blair Taylor, 36. Independence, Gilmanton, 14. Uh, Melman falling to Augusta, 44-28. DeSoto beating Boscobel handily 44 to 6. Uh, Prairie du Chien falling to New Blair's Monticello 28 27 in a last second. Yeah, 19 uh, seconds feet. left, I think it was. And they, they came back from quite the deficit to, to even be in that point. Uh, La Crescent Hoka playing in its first varsity season since 2018, looking for its first win still. They fall to Lake City tonight 39 to 12. And Brookwood falling to Wazika Steuben Seneca, 23-6. Yes. Uh, so full slate of games. Uh, Aquinas won big last night over Black River Falls. Uh, we are at that game. And Caledonia plays it's Saturday. tomorrow night. Well, tonight. It's yeah. early Saturday. <laughs> uh, but where do you want to start? Do you want to start uh, with I your game? Just, I think or we can start with your game. Yeah. I mean, it was... It, Every week you go somewhere and it's just craziness. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'd like to, maybe it's because it's on Alaska. This is yeah, my maybe. Third, <laughs> third time in four weeks. Maybe their games are just bound to be uh, entertaining. I, I joked with Yash about that. Uh, I don't know if that was last week or if it was this week or if it was both sometime. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really interesting. Uh, like I said in the open, pretty good offense uh, from both teams. Herlitsky was good. Uh, mostly eh, the numbers through the air kind of deceptive because he he threw for over 100, 100 yards and two touchdowns. He was threw for 172, 132 yards and two touchdowns, but he was only four of nine. Okay, uh, so big plays. So big plays. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what, do you, what else would you expect, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, but he was really effective on the ground too. Uh, One seventeen on the ground, two touchdowns. So four touchdowns. Uh, we were kind of talking about that in the newsroom. Before going out to games tonight, that last week he just really couldn't get anything going on the ground. But tonight he was able to. But Central was also able to run the ball pretty effectively uh, as a whole. Aiden Larson was really good tonight. Uh, threw one pick, but it was on a fourth down and it was a tip pass. So I mean, yeah. I mean, you got to risk. If it's fourth down, you got you got to throw the ball anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he threw for over 200 yards and five touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, three to Michael Scamp. One to Nick Odom and one to Connor Johansson, uh, and honestly, and Nick Odom served as a spark for Alaska after they were in a fourteen nothing hole. They seemed to me like they were trying to get him the ball. I mean, he's he's just so slippery. <laughs> you get him into space and trying to take him down. Wow. Uh, but yeah so central gets out to a, a 14 nothing lead and it took only, it took him only three plays to score okay. uh 63 yard touchdown pass to jackson warren from herlitsky uh to set the tone for the game uh on alaska down some offensive linemen tonight and some defensive linemen tonight uh and just had had some trouble kind of getting any sort of rhythm early on and so that's central opens up that 
the 14 point lead. Their second drive was essentially all run. They threw, they had two pass plays. Both of them were incomplete. One of them wouldn't matter because it, it was a holding call anyway. But they went 85 yards on the second drive all on the ground. So that gives you kind of a sense of where the Central's offensive line and their running game was tonight. Uh, Which and that's something they they kind of really needed after getting shut out by West Salem. Right, week. yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, they, they were, I don't want to say they were shocked with what happened after the game, but the players were obviously very down with what happened. Right. Uh, losing a 10 nothing game to, to West Salem last week. Right. They scored 90-some points the first two weeks, and then you get a goose egg, and right. you're going to wonder what went wrong. So they kind of really needed to go out there and try and get something. And then the good start, I'm, I'm sure, it really helped them get through this one. Yeah, and they didn't really have any hiccups offensively until the end of the third quarter. Uh, and, I mean, you know, on Alaska even, uh, so they they scored to get within, what was it? I think Central goes up 22-7, uh, and on Alaska then scores thanks to a, an 80-yard touchdown pass from Larson to Michael Skemp, who had himself quite a night, 118 receiving yards and three touchdowns. Also, Moss the kid for one of his touchdowns. Hmm. Uh, really, really impressive night from him. Uh, that touchdown gets them within a score and they onside kick. Because I mean, you got to steal possession because they weren't on Alaska wasn't having any trouble, or Alaska was having trouble uh, stopping Central. And then Yash said after the game that that was part of the reason why they did it. But I mean, he also said they saw stuff on film. But when you can't when you can't stop, them, you might as well try to steal possession. Yeah. And they were able to do it. Uh, another touchdown pass to Scamp right before the half brings it 22-20 at the half, and they get the first possession of the second half and go down and score to take the lead. Uh, so That's like I said, really good off really good offensive game here, right? Uh, but Central Central came right back uh, from that. Uh, two two rushes from Ethan Shepard who had himself a nice night, 77 rushing yards and a touchdown while also playing linebacker on the other <laughs> side of the ball. Uh, Got him into on Alaska territory. Then Herlitsky to Quinn Service, 22 yards into the red zone. Two plays later, uh, Herlitsky on a jet sweep keeper right up the middle uh, for 10 yards, lead right back to Central. Uh, and Central led the rest of the way, though it was interesting at the end, they were able to kind of expand their lead after <laughs> a crazy couple punt sequences. Mm -hmm. The first from Central, wherein that, well, that, that, that might be hard to describe. Uh, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Your video. I'll try. Uh, <laughs> snap goes over the punter's head, and they're at like they're at like what the thirty-two? I think they're at like the thirty-two. They're at, they're at their own thirty-two. The ball goes over his head, and chases it down, and he's like probably at like the five at this point, roughly, and. He like <laughs> he's running to his left and then realizes there's nowhere to go over there. And if he even wanted to kick the ball, you I mean he's right footed, there's no way he's gonna be able to kick the ball right. It's just not gonna work. So he flips around, starts running to his right. By this point, he's in the end zone. Manages to get the punt off somehow. And the ball's very clearly just going to make it back to the original line of scrimmage. There's an Alaska kid standing there who jumps up and bats the ball down onto the ground and Central recovers the ball. So it's their ball again mm -hmm. at the 32, uh, which was, I I think we were all kind of like, what just happened? Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen that one. No, I hadn't either. Uh, it didn't end up mattering in the sense that Central didn't score any points on that drive. They ended up punting again. Uh, but if you're on Alaska, that's a, that's a missed opportunity so, yeah. uh, there. Uh, but then even good field position, maybe. right? So Central Central's next position, they punt. They kind of pin on Alaska deep. Aiden Larson takes a sack, and they're back at the one. And their snap is rough. It's high, and the punter essentially has no choice but to try to like take it out of the end zone. And I mean, he gets out, but he only gets out to like the six. So Central's got the ball all of a sudden on Alaska six. So then they're able to kind of expand that lead. Mm -hmm. uh, on Alaska, 
scores late in the fourth quarter. Like I said, Aiden Larson was really sharp. I think they were probably Central's defense wasn't playing quite as tight at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. But six plays, 71 yards, just like that, on Alaska's back within three points. And in a testament to uh, how confident they still, like, Central still is in that offense and Mason, Mason Herlitsky, like, after last week, they, they get the ball, they're facing a, a fourth and three from their own 43 with 57 seconds to go. On Alaska's out of timeouts, and they keep the offense on the field. And Herlitsky <laughs> probably should have given the ball on this read option, but kept it and made two guys miss and like lunch forward for the first like for four yards he barely got the first down yeah. and they survived that's how the game ended uh it's kind of anti i mean it was it was anticlimactic but also wasn't considered oh, that's that, a that, that's an exciting play to go out on though. right Fourth yeah and three and to convert that in that position at that spot on the field i mean right that's yeah like, i was i personally so they that was actually out of a timeout too so yeah. they had after the third down play, they like kept the offense out on the field, and it was like, okay, well, they're just going to call a timeout. Like, it's fine. Like, no big deal. They're going to punt, whatever. And so, you know, they call a timeout. Everybody's, you know, everybody's off their sidelines, and then the offense comes back off on the field. And I, like, I started recording a sound, like, my video as soon as, uh, you know, kind of the offensive line was set and everything. And they, I can't remember, like, they, like, pop, Mason, like, paused for a second mm -hmm. and, like, looked back over the sideline. And I think I audibly said, they're they're going to call a timeout. Like, they're they're going to take another timeout here. And they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and funny. obviously it worked out. Uh, Mitch Olson said that he felt with the way the offensive line was playing all night that it really wasn't, there wasn't much of a discussion to be had about whether or not they were going to punt. Uh, Nishinsky wasn't particularly surprised that they – Decided go to go for it, considering one, you've got a player like Mason Orlinski, and you might as well have the ball in your mm -hmm. best player's hands. And number two, going back to their the hunting ball. issues. Yeah, so the back one. Uh, the previous one. Yeah. So why not? Uh, and obviously it worked out for Central. And so now so that's... Big win for the Riverhawks. Absolutely. Going into River Falls. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's... So one loss apiece for Central and Alaska in the MVC. River, River Falls still unbeaten. Mm -hmm. uh, Sparta actually still unbeaten, and West Salem, yes, still unbeaten. Another another good night for the Panthers, especially on defense. Um, offense made enough big plays mm -hmm. uh, to get through this game with Logan. I mean, Logan came out and, and threw a punch right away and took the ball right down the field and scored the first official touchdown that uh, West Salem has allowed this year uh, after a couple of shutouts. Um, they gave some points to Ellsworth, but that was in no contest, so it didn't count. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so Logan came out and went, I think it was 78 yards. Um, a nice combination of, of runs and throws. They didn't have you know one thing they were going back to, uh, but it was a very nice drive to start the game. And then that was kind of it. Uh, yeah. West Salem came, answered right away, Got within seven six, tried a, a fake on the extra point that just didn't work, um, but uh, then held Logan, got another touchdown, to take the lead, and led the rest of the way. Uh, but it stayed one score for quite a while. Uh, they they went up fourteen to seven early in the second quarter and didn't score again until late in the third. Um, so it was, it was a tight game, and and Logan made some nice plays to give itself chances. Um, Martell Owens got in on a, a, a pass and hit the quarterback's hand or arm and knocked the ball loose for an easy interception for a teammate. Um, they had another interception uh, later in the game, uh, but couldn't convert on, on those. Had, they had some turnovers, but penalties really kind of hurt them. They had some holding calls that you know, turned first and 10 into first and 20, right. or second, whatever, into second and 20. And everything so they had some some badly timed uh, flags I think but uh, CJ McConkey really played a good game uh, I, I talked to Casey Noble after the game and, and he's like he said he's the best linebacker we've seen this year 
there was one play, it was second half, um, where it was a handoff to, I think it was to Eli Reynolds when Logan had the ball. And I just saw this huge hole and McConkie came through it, came right through the middle of it and closed it up just like that. I mean, it, it looked like it was going for a big game and it didn't look, look like there was any way it was going to be stopped for, you know, anything less than, right. you know, eight, 10 yards. Sure. And then boom, he just blasts through it and it stops him for like a one yard game, maybe even at the line of scrimmage. Uh, so it just kind of came out of nowhere. And we were talking about that on the sideline and other people saw the same thing. Uh, no, it looked like a big gainer, but not with McConkey there. Uh, he also had, had to carry the ball a decent amount. Luke Noel didn't play, hurt his hand last week um, and, and wasn't out there. So uh, they went with the McConkey show. Uh, the two McConkeys running the ball, yep. quarterback keeper and, and handing off to CJ. Uh, CJ had two touchdowns in the game, had 41 yarder uh, at the end of the third quarter, which followed a, a nice 39 yard pass from uh, Brett McConkey, I think to Andy Johnson. Uh, on that one um, to set it up. Uh, but it was just a, a run to the right. He made a nice cut to the left and, and went 41 yards for the touchdown. And that kind of really changed things. Gave yeah. him at least, put him up two scores. Right. Certainly didn't end the game for Logan, but you, you could see it take a little out of the sideline. I was on the Logan sideline. Sure. Uh, and opposite effect on the other side of the field. Right. Of course, because now they have a cushion. So And that defense. Yeah, and that defense. And, and I know West Salem wasn't thrilled with the way it played. In this game, they were talking after the game about winning ugly games. Um, but, you know, again, the offense did what it needed to do. I, I, I'm still waiting for that, that passing game to break out. Okay. It, it has to at some point. There's just too much potential there, I think, for that passing game. Okay. And what they're trying to get there, um, there was a nice throw. Um, McConkey made a nice throw uh, to Jack Haley for their first touchdown. Okay. And Justin Yane, a West Salem coach, thought it was a big deal that it was a passing touchdown. It kind of gives them some some confidence there. Of course, the other two are on the ground. Uh, CJ just destroying and obliterating a Logan defender at the goal line on the first one uh, for, for that touchdown. But uh, another impressive, I, they say ugly, ugly game. I, when I go to West Salem games, I'm much more watching defense. And I thought they gave up some big plays. Uh, but for the most part, they made Logan earn the yards. So, you know, it's a W, uh, another one, and they're off to a good start. And they've got Sparta next week. Is that right? Look at the schedule. See who they have. I think that's, I imagine if they're playing NBC this week, it's got to be because Central's got River Falls, yep. on Alaska, Logan, and Holman, Toma. Okay. So it's got to so, yeah. be. So two unbeaten's in yep. in the MVC and and Sparta an offense and that has come like to kind of yeah <laughs> it's kind of found itself here, uh, so maybe so that's an interesting up. test for for that defense. Yes, I think well yeah it's going to be a different one. I mean, Thomas Laufenberg has really turned into something his first year as a starter here. Right. Uh, I think he passed for two touchdowns, ran for one tonight. But Correct. He. Uh, He's had three really good games in a row. Um, and I, I saw him play Moss in week two. And we, we talk, I talked to Adam Dow after the game, Sparta coach, and discussed the growth that he saw from week one to week two. And it's just kind of continued, I think, from there. So he, he's, not, he's a sophomore, but he's not shy. He was out there lowering his shoulder, trying to run over people, um, and then making nice, nice throws. He, when they played Moston, that their offensive line played well and he didn't have to work too hard sure. to make those throws, but he's still completing passes uh, at a good clip. And uh, obviously tonight was a one-sided win. Right. And that's, you know, next week's a much different challenge. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but Sparta's get, I mean, they've got athletes on, on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, I know a lot yeah. of those guys go both ways, right? But I mean, Nick Kent's a good runner. Carson Kelsey, Carson Kelsey and he, player, in, you know? yeah, when he gets in space, he's one of those guys that, he can be hard to corral. So they not another guy that they, they have so many there. Uh, but whenever it seems like whenever they look to him for something, they okay. get something out of him too. Another guy. Yeah. Uh, Bangor tonight. Uh, we're just talking about uh, Matthew Osterley is our area leading rusher. Uh, you only though, played three games. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. though <laughs> the Cardinals have only played three games, uh, he had twenty nine carries for two eighty two. And four touchdowns. 
tonight yeah. in Bangor's win. And Tanner Jones. Tanner Jones, uh, 174 and two touchdowns. So there's that's 450 yards out of two, and six touchdowns from two running backs. Yes. Uh, so we can see Bangor is on the track for something big. Bangor this year, I think. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, the seat is, you know, removed just a couple of years removed from not being able to field the team, but they've they've won some games, so it's not you know they're not brand new mm -hmm. uh, like the Crescent and getting their feet wet again. So. Uh, you know, Bangor gave up 30 points. They're not going to be happy about that, but they certainly seem to move the ball as well. Yeah, 49. If you're going to put up 49, yeah. you're probably going to. You should win most of those games. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a game that we were kind of disappointed we weren't able to get to just because of, I mean, Cash and Luther. Yep. Uh, I mean, just because, honestly, like, we want to see Cash in too. Uh, uh, Colin O'Neill. Uh, it's funny to walk back in the newsroom and you say what the final score was, and I'm like, well, Colin O'Neill probably had, you know, Crisp little 150 and two touchdowns. I mean, 141 and two touchdowns. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's what we come to expect at this point from Cashin, which is really uh, cool to see, especially, I mean, you wrote about this last year after that Bang the Bangor Cashin game, just about how uh, significant it was that they were in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're starting this year. I mean, they're 4-0 and 2-0 in the conference. Uh, I mean, this, this is a solid start, and uh, that's a convincing win. Yeah. Uh, over Luther too. Uh, well, and they had to come back. From right, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say, then, yeah. Uh, Luther went ahead and then Cashton tied it. Luther went ahead again and then Cashton took over at that point. Right. So, uh, Cashton's still a program where, you know, if they're playing a good team and they win, it's still a really good thing. They right. I, they can go into games and expect to win, but I think where the program is, they, they still have to go out and prove to themselves they can win those games. Yeah. And this one, they got a challenge and they went out and won. Now, are they looking, I don't want to say looking ahead, but are they all thinking about Bangor? Of course they are. Um, <laughs> they, they played with Bangor last year and, yeah. and, and you know knew if they did a couple of things different or a couple of things better, things may have changed. So um, they're really going to be pumped for that game when it comes uh, at the end of the year. Uh, but they got to get to there. They got to get yeah. to that point first, yeah. and you do that by knocking off teams. Right. Like this. Right. And, and so I, I think tonight was an impressive win. For yeah. The Eagles. And who knows? Maybe that Cash and Bangor game eventually is a, a shootout. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, with the way those offenses are playing, uh, Holman River Falls, uh, a game like you said, not as not as one sided as the score might suggest if you're yeah, just looking at the final. Yeah, River Falls scored the last two touchdowns of that one. Holman got within uh, 22 to 20. They gave up the first three touchdowns and got three of their own. Uh, went for two points on the last one to try and get the tie and it just didn't work, uh, incomplete pass. Uh, and then River Falls scored the last two touchdowns in the last four and a half minutes. So, you know, another game that, you know, Holman 0 and 4, first time since 2010. Um, I don't think it'll go to 0 and 5 if, if they're playing Tolman next week. I think they'll be able to get it mm -hmm. together for that. Uh, but two turnovers tonight, which is much better than seven they had last week. And they, and yeah. they forced a couple. Uh, they outgained River Falls. So they did some things right in this one. They just couldn't finish it. Yeah, I think that second half last week in Alaska was honestly a, an important two quarters. Yeah, they uh, showed, they showed life there too. And they yeah. haven't shown a lot of life the first couple of weeks. So. Yeah. Yeah. Other notables, um, Blair Taylor's won three in a row since losing to Luther to start the season. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're now three and one. Uh, DeSoto, I mean, we've come to expect uh, DeSoto to, I mean, be a really good team in the, in the, in the Ridge and Valley. And um, Brzezinski had another big night. Uh, yeah. A couple of touchdowns, I think, tonight. Yep. So. And Evan Pedretti threw for two. Uh, to his sophomore brother, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Arcadia still unbeaten also in the Cooley and for the season, but they had to come back to beat Westby uh, this evening. Okay, and Updike, another big game, had hand in both those touchdowns at the end to tie yep. up and go ahead. Yep. I think there was about four minutes left when they won that game. Yep, yep. Uh, GT getting on the board, uh, Jeff Wiseman getting his first career win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we missed, last week we missed uh, talking about Caledonia dropping their streak, yep. um, but they'll try to rebound and get get a win tomorrow. See how it goes on Saturday, I'm, I'm sure they're, they put it behind them already. 
I'm sure all the kids are disappointed, and, right. but you know, you have a bunch of coaches there that knew this was going to happen yep. at some point, so they've probably been doing things to get them ready uh, to play this next game and, and try to not think about that. So right. um, kind of a tough, I, I mean, a tough first start for Lewis Doyle, had four interceptions, passed for a lot of yards, so he did some things right. Um, so he's got that to try and build on. Right. A uh, couple of good receivers making some big plays for them. So I think the oddball thing on that was the fact that they gave up the last 23 points and yeah. kind of lost the game. That's not something Caledonia yeah. does. Um, talk to anybody that's played there the last 15 years, and that's going to be foreign to them. Right. Um, but you know, give credit to Lake City, which then you know came out and, and beat Lacrescent pretty handily today. So. Correct. Uh, that that kind of shows what kind of team it is. Right. So uh, we'll see how Calvin moves forward. I think they'll move forward okay. Yeah, I would briefly touch on Aquinas. Jackson Flommar was crisp again last night. Uh, Quinn Muskowski was all over the field. Mm -hmm. uh, the defense was good again. Yeah. Uh, there could be some pretty fun Cooley Conference games coming yeah. up. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Aquinas get the chance to play Westby in, in Arcadia. I think they have Westby next week. Um, but this wasn't much of a challenge. Black River came out in the first possession trying to, to lead clock yep. right off the bat, which I can't argue with. That's, no. Aquinas came out and scored on the second play yep, of the mean, game. It was, a long, it was a long touchdown. Miskowski right. just ran by the defense, and Flatmeyer put it up there. So, uh, but But... Aquinas was physical mm -hmm. in that game uh, and, and played very well defensively. I mean, they scored 58 points too, but you know, I thought their defense was, was really good against the Black River Falls team that had been able to put up yards and right. the points. Exactly. Uh, and we were expecting point. we we were expecting them to try to throw the ball a lot too. And they kind yeah, of and they waited running. To... Yeah, and they waited a little while. They they ended up completing some throws as the game went on uh, that allowed them to you know do something with some drives, but they only had one touchdown drive uh, and Aquinas came out and, and answered that uh, in the third quarter and just kind of marched on to another win. So, yeah. But they're, Aquinas is a very impressive team to this point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that wraps it up for us. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back here next week uh, to wrap up week five in Wisconsin, week three in Minnesota. Uh, in the meantime, you can find videos like these on our YouTube channel, The Cross Tribune. Search it up. Uh, Hit the little bell button uh, to subscribe and you'll get a notification whenever we post a video, regardless of the time of day or night. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you can find all of our stuff, as always, at lacrossetribune.com. That's, you know, game stories, uh, roundups, videos, photos, what have you. So, uh, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again next week.